I had this dream of putting the Okanagan Valley on the world wine map. And people scoffed and laughed and, and, and thought it was outrageous. But I believe because the fruit was so incredible in the Okanagan Valley, if you look at our peaches and cherries and apricots and so on, we should be able to grow amazing grapes. The company was founded in a, in a 10 by 10 square office in the back of the Queen Elizabeth Playhouse Theatre. Uh, and it was, uh, the rent was $29.95 a month. And there were several months I couldn't pay. I was basically selling wine out of the trunk of my car to people because the liquor board at the time wouldn't buy my wines. Given that you can't make great wine overnight, it takes time, to survive I had to find something else to finance. This no one would give me a dollar, let alone a dime. And so cider was something that was, there was a lot of consumed and thought, well, if I just make an apple cider, that's what everybody else is doing, but why not make something that has never been done before in the world? Let's use other fruit, let's use cherries, let's use peaches, let's make different types of ciders. It kept the winery going, created an entirely new category in the, in the cider business, tripled the size of the entire Canadian cider market, and we became the largest cider producer in Canada. He's a unique businessman because he, uh... He breaks the ground. I mean, he, um, he takes a lot of risks, but his risks usually work out. Anthony has gone through trials and tribulations, and that's what's made him um, who he is today. He's learned, uh, I'm sure, the hard way as some other people have, but you know, Anthony just continues and he never gives up. We had this old line that could bottle those stubby bottles, and the stubby bottles were the only beer bottle. And what people don't know, it was a very clever, it was an incredibly bright move by the big brewers, of which there were three back then in Canada, to keep the Americans out. Because at that time they were recycling, rewashing these bottles. The problem was that we had to buy brand new glass because we didn't, we had the facilities to wash them. So when one of the breweries decided to break out of the cartel basically and went to a tall neck, I got a letter from the Brewers Association saying you owe us $2.7 million and where do you want all your stubbies back? So came up with this brand, Clark's Great Canadian Beer in genuine rugged Canadian bottles and sold every last, sold every last bottle, recovered the money so we could stay in business. I can tell you, CPG companies find it so hard to even grow one big brand and it's easier to buy them. But Anthony has, I don't know, the Midas touch on, on brand building. He is just a remarkable, innovative, forward thinker. So it started with wine, as I mentioned, in terms of ciders came to finance the winery, and frankly, the whole ready-to-drink business was all about financing the Okanagan Valley. We then got into spirits, which had been in a bit before, and lastly, we've really just started to enter the non-alcohol beverage market with the White Claw Zero, which is a radical product that tastes like a alcoholic product but isn't. The really special thing about Anthony is, it's the things that we don't know what he does. He actually sees the importance of giving back and he does it quietly. He doesn't do it for publicity. He does it because he cares. We're involved in helping others be their best, accomplish things they never thought they could do, and also helping society in that way. Anthony Vaughn Mandel is an important partner of the CUC Indian Band. He's very highly respectful of First Nation lands and First Nation heritage and culture. He actively cares about the, this province's economy and that people here have good jobs and, and live a good lifestyle and are respectful of, of the environment as well. He is actually making an impact. In every business he touches, he actually changes the lives of many people for the good. And I guess by now, we and certainly Mark Anthony, the company, were so conditioned to see a silver lining in anything, and anything that goes wrong, there's always a spark of rebirth. There's always a spark of, of thinking different and, and coming up with unique ways of, 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 of bringing something to consumers that's, that's different. I know that people in my industry, in the food and beverage industry, we're just in awe 
of what Anthony has done and continues to do with the brands that he owns. Yeah, he does things that uh, um, they bring people to the Okanagan from all, from all over the world. Not very many business people actually do that.